Hi, I'm Dr. Theodore Schwartz. I'm an associate professor of neurosurgery at Weill Cornell Medical College, New York Presbyterian Hospital. I'm here to introduce a DVD on endoscopic skull base surgery. Endoscopic skull base surgery is a field that has arisen over the past five years through a convergence of a variety of factors. Uh, one is the increase in technologic advances in endoscopes and image processing. Uh, two is an increase in stereotactic navigation and computer processing technology. Three is the acceptance of endoscopic sinus surgery uh, as a field within otolaryngology and advances in technique uh, in endoscopic endonasal surgery. Uh, four is the uh, acceptance of intraventricular endoscopic surgery within neurosurgery and the acceptance of minimal access neurosurgery to remove intraventricular tumors and perform third ventriculostomies. And finally, is a close collaboration between otolaryngology and neurosurgery. The anterior skull base lies really at the interface of the anatomic knowledge of the neurosurgeon and the otolaryngologist. Traditionally, this area has been approached either through a craniotomy or through a transfacial approach or through a combination of these two. With uh, the new endoscopes, uh, minimally invasive approaches can now be used to reach the anterior skull base merely through the nostrils. These techniques are used now to remove tumors such as meningiomas uh, that arise from the olfactory groove, the planum sphenoidale, and the tuberculum cella, craniopharyngiomas arising from the supracellar space behind a normal-sized cella uh, extending into the third ventricle, clival area tumors can also be reached such as clival chordomas and chondrosarcomas. Uh, encephaloceles is another pathology easily reached through the nostrils. These can be located in the pterygoid fossa, the infratemporal fossa, or the lateral sphenoid sinus. And finally, pituitary tumors, not just microadenomas, but also macroadenomas that extend high up into the brain. Traditionally, these have been removed via craniotomy or have required special techniques such as, such as insufflation of air through a lumbar drain. With the endoscopes, this is no longer necessary. Unfortunately, in neurosurgery, there's been some reluctance to accept these techniques based on certain biases. These biases are unfounded, and that is the purpose of this DVD. Some neurosurgeons think that with endoscopes, the visualization is not as good. There's a lack of stereoscopic and depth of field perception, which limits surgical abilities, and that there's an increased risk of CSF leak and blood can obscure the lenses. After performing over 250 cases with my colleague, Dr. Vijay Anand, I'm here to say that, in fact, this is untrue. With the endoscopes, in fact, the visualization is much improved. The openings are smaller, so the risk of CSF leak is less, uh, and the uh, blood can easily be cleared from the endoscope, and with proper patient positioning, there's uh, minimal bleeding. In this DVD, we wish to demonstrate some of our more interesting cases and also show an overview of the variety of pathologies and approaches that can be reached through the nostrils using minimally invasive endoscopic techniques.